Really? Did the stream stuck. No, it's still up. Is it mine or? <clears throat> no, Supreme. Supreme's down. Supreme down. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh shit. Thank God it's not me for once in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Are we back? We're back. All right, you didn't miss anything. You just missed the the transition. So we're into Dustman now. So uh, when RT is this game, we're first happening. This is where most people started. Although I guess it was kind of a toss up as to like what stage to start with. But for a while, we were playing Dustman first, and then we switched to Pharaoh once it became practical to do so. Because in this stage here, uh, Pharaoh Man's weapon is going to decimate the boss that otherwise would take a long time to kill. Dustman sucks. Dang it, dude. That sucks. This whole time I was trying to multitask and clear out the, uh, the live stream <laughs> because it went live again as soon as Supreme went live for me. <laughs> oh no. Whatever, that's like not a bad death at all. We'll just add that to your setup time. Alright, gotta get it together for walking it. Oh my god, this game ends. <laughs> For Dustman, I start out charging, and I'm gonna take damage on his particles to try and minimize the damage I take, and basically take the damage boost hits, because you store uh, basically a shield shot and a shot that you can fire. So you get two shots for one use. I don't know. I'm bad at explaining things. Yeah, I mean, you, you pretty much said it. It's, it, it. If you collide uh, with the boss, you'll you'll attack him once with the Pharah weapon, and then again, it'll still think that you have it, so you can fire it a second time without having to charge it again. Fragment stage is kind of interesting um, because you can manipulate the boss based on like how much health you have, so if you don't take damage in the stage, you'll always do the same pattern. And even if you do, at the end there, there's going to be a chance to get a health drop from Eddie in any case, so sometimes you can have a bad stage and get bailed out of it. Getting rewarded for bad play. We, we count those. <laughs> uh, in this game, Jeez. Dustman's weapon is extremely versatile because it'll explode on contact with an enemy and it'll split into four different pieces. So a lot of times you can use dust to clear multiple enemies that are near each other. Yeah, important so, took damage. Yep, yeah, because uh, Garrison's health was an odd number, that triggers the ability for the the bright uh, stopper to go off there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can salvage it if you can tell you're on an odd number, but it's really hard to tell on my TV if I am or not, so I just hope for the best. Yeah, and I mean, it's not a monumental time loss by any means, but it's just something it's, you hope not to have to deal with. Really funny because you can try and uh, mitigate things and you just end up screwing yourself over. Because you'll get stuck in his hitbox like with invulnerability frames, so you take way longer than it would be if you had just taken the hit normally. So Skullman's stage here has some interesting slides and, and damage boosting. Uh, see, I don't know if you're planning to jump over the uh, spike pit or not, but... I'm going for everything except for Trailman thing. Oh yeah, you made it look easy. <laughs> One thing that's kind of cool about the ability to air slide is it shrinks Mega Man's hitbox. So he is one tile tall instead of two. So you can air slide over a bunch of things you can't just jump over. These platforms in this room here uh, move up or down based on whether you're standing on them or jumping above them. And it's not the same for every one of them, so you have to know which ones go which direction. And if Garrison fights, uh, well not if he fights the boss right, but when he uh, kills the boss here, 
he has an opportunity to freeze the screen on a really interesting uh, freeze frame, so we'll see if he does that. One frame, man. You got Yo, it. Yo, beak ass sounds. Electric dinosaur in the background. Nice frame. Thanks, man. There's a reason you're running this at AGDQ. The reason it's a race. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> but Drillman, uh, interestingly enough, when we started RTAing this game, Ice Plug had a route where Drillman would go first. Ice Plug is a firm believer in Balloon. Balloon is actually really good. Balloon is very useful in the task. So in this stage, yeah, there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, usage of Bright to just kind of freeze enemies in place and then navigate the rooms. In addition, the stage splits here between top and bottom, and Garrison's going to go up top, which is a little bit faster. Something like... How much at all, like, a fifth of a second? So Drillman can dive into the ground, and it's kind of frustrating if he does, but uh, you can actually, you can toss the skulls at him from a distance, and other than that, the idea is just be very close to him, and just like that, he'll take damage and die. Now we're getting to the good music. It's like a I solid mean... block of great songs back to back. Dude, this is a meme song, please. What? Dude, Daytona is great. Have you ever heard Ice Plug sing it? Yes, yeah, a dive band song for whatever reason is Daytona USA. Um, I don't know any Daytona event that took place underwater, but... In the future, man. You never know. So these uh, mini bosses here can actually die in one hit if you get close enough to them and throw the dust in the right spot. So Garrison doesn't have to even slow down to fight those. Yeah, basically you throw the, I don't know, the dust crusher underneath them and he gets hit by all the shrapnel so he just dies instantly. It's actually possible to clip into that water using Rush Marine, but it doesn't do anything other than uh, it, it'll actually eject you back into the stage if you move all the way over to the right. But it's just slower. It's kind of unfortunate. It's a neat little clip. You know, nice whale. Thanks, man. Uh, dive man fight is a very rhythmic fight. He just needs to time these shots. And with good movement, he can actually manipulate where dive man moves. Just like Mega Man 4, you want to have the bubble go off screen at a good time. Otherwise, you're going to be waiting for longer. Alright, now the music begins. <laughs> this song right here, man. I heard a rumor you like this one. Oh, dude, ring. This stage has a lot of really cool mini boss things going on. Skips. Yeah, this first screen here is just going to be a lot of tricky platforming. It's very easy to uh, get hit by an enemy or have something go wrong. And then on the second screen here, he's going to actually slide right over the mini boss. Oh, looks like he... I tried. Close, but, yeah, <laughs> it was close. It was close. The song is so good, man. Oh my god. What a great time to be alive. Once again, we're going to use the rush teleporting thing. And we're going to climb up the tower pretty quickly. Oh, nice. I like the jet use there. That's my favorite slide in the game. Nice slide. Thanks, dude. And again, here with positioning on this fight, you can kind of manipulate the ring tosses. It's just one of those things where you need to do everything pretty well, because if you mess up just one shot, he's going to be somewhere you don't want him to be. 
You don't really have a lot of control with your dive missiles. Which is pretty unfortunate. It looks like it controls a lot better than Mega Man 4 though. <laughs> well it actually hits the enemy, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Toad Man. Toad Man's my favorite robot master theme. Yeah, the only disappointing part about Toad Man is that in the speedrun, by the time the song gets good, you're at the boss. It's still pretty good though. So the uh, gimmick to this stage is the weather, and it's going to push you in various directions. It'll be really tricky to navigate this portion here. Oh, oh my nice. god, you went for that. That was aggressive. <laughs> How tight is that? Like, two frames? Uh, it's not that tight. It's probably like four frames or something like that. Yeah, it looks like you fall really fast. You do. <laughs> Uh, another thing too is that the snail mini boss there melts the Pharaoh Man's weapon, so another benefit of doing Pharaoh Man first mm -hmm. is being able to take out that mini boss. Now we've hit the second half of the game, so all the uh, the weapon usage is going to be kind of tight. You're going to see a lot more weapons than you would in like a standard classic Mega Man because we have the ability to switch fast and we can refill instantaneously. There are still a few places where I go to the actual pause menu just because it's more convenient, but for the most part it's just a lot of good switches. Shoutouts to Rush Marine. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> yeah, so one of, one of the tricky parts of this game is that the, a lot of them, a lot of the weapons that is, uh, or and Rush included, are blues and purples, and from TV to TV they actually look different too. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. So it can be tough to know which one you're on until you actually use it. The thing too is. When you switch weapons, you go forward by pressing select, but you go backwards by pressing down and select, which is really awkward. So a lot of times, it's better to just like mash through your entire power list and hope you land on the right one. So in that one screen, I mashed eight times like, on the ladder. So we, we also saw a wire acquired in this stage, and wire is going to have a variety of uses later on. Uh, it can be used offensively, it can be used to get over some pits that are uh, actually fairly difficult to navigate even with the wire, but it's got some pretty neat uses in the speedrun. This is my favorite song in the game. This is a really interesting stage too. Um, you can actually get Eddie to move pretty much the same way across the, uh, the screen every time, and so you can have Eddie refill your ammo if you do it right. Yeah. And it... Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I, uh, it's always somewhat close, but sometimes, like, the situation I just had, I'm a little bit low on Rush Jet, but that's alright. It's not as low as it could be. Yeah, and there's gonna be a second auto scrolling section here with uh, Rush Jet and Eddie. And if you do this uh, section correctly here, you actually have an opportunity to get back almost all the ammo for all of your weapons if you happen to be missing any. So you'll see uh, Garrison's kind of doing a shuffle right now of all his different ammo, making sure he's got everything filled up. Boss here is a big fluck boss in the game. Yeah, this is going to be one of those where you just kind of hope that uh, he's open to damage on a cycle. But once the uh, box stops moving there, get in and attack with the skulls. Hopefully you hit him three times in the phase. 
And that's the best you can do with that pattern. This next stage is really cool. It's got some <laughs> nice damage boosts and some uh, wire use. Yeah, right off the bat, there's an aggressive uh, damage boost here. Just using the pellets to just barely make it onto that other platform. The song owns, by the way. You can kind of see the power of Skull, too. Uh, for a lot of the run earlier in, in the uh, Robot Master stage, a lot of dust usage, but Skull can also clear things pretty quickly, too. Here's a lot of use of the wire. This is one of the only times I actually go to the pause mini, just because it's a lot more convenient for me. Yeah, so this boss has two different weaknesses. Uh, the top is weak to ring, and then he's going to jump back down to the bottom and use dust. And if he's... Yeah, very nice. He's uh, able to switch over to wire quickly enough, and then kill with the wire. Switching to wire is really tough, and sometimes the shots, when they hit you, they just <laughs> wreck your life. It's unfortunate. So I use Rain Flesh a bit here. It's useful for getting rid of birds. There's not a whole lot to say about these sections here other than note the uh, constant switching of the weapons that are being used. It's all part of the ammo conservation for later on. And this Cossack has an interesting infinite <laughs> that you can do by spamming wire. Hopefully he won't grab you while you're trying to uh, grab you once there. As soon as I said it. to the Wily stages. Shoutouts to Final Fantasy VI. Hey, that's a game in this marathon. Heck yeah. Eh? The stage sucks. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff you can do in the stage that's aggressive and risky. Uh, or you can just ride the jet, that works too. Yeah, I'm just doing the jet stuff. I would too, to be honest. That that room there with the, the blocks and the water, you can be aggressive if you want to and take a damage boost and try to go through them, but not worth the death. The reason the stage is kind of unfortunate is the boss is also a big luck element. boss is going to be weak to, once again, uh, Pharaoh Man's weapon, uh, which we're going to charge. But the problem is that there are two different patterns you can get, and that will influence how much ammo you're going to use. It's also really easy to get stuck in the mat itself and take way more damage than you expect. I got bad luck, but whatever. Yeah, it happens. So I got the bad coin flip. <laughs> Oops, well I have plenty of ring now. <laughs> oh no. 
That's not the worst thing that could happen, but it's not a good thing. <laughs> no. This is a dangerous stage just because of all the different things that pop up out of the pits, but you can usually throw up a skull as you go over the pits uh, to kind of negate that. Oh wow, I need to learn that hallway. <laughs> yeah, I'll teach it to you sometime. It's actually not going, that bad. Going through there without stopping is uh, very nice. This room uh, is one of those, like, you can get caught sleeping. There's a lot of jump slide, jump slide, jump slide. And if you make one little mistake, you can just fall right into the pit. And here we've got our good pal, Paco Trash. Old taco trash. Taco trash. There's a faster thing that you can do that I haven't worked on it, where it's kind of like the chill man fight in Mega Man 10, where you switch weapons to get rid of your on screen projectile, but it's just really brutal. Oh, really? <laughs> You're dodging a whole bunch of stuff. And it's not even like better 100% of the time, it's just like there's a lot of situational uses for it. The refights in this game are great because it doesn't stop the uh, boss music. Yes, this is something that uh, I wish other Mega Man games had. There's also a couple of different opportunities to route this depending on, uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken here, usually you'll just swap to the next weapon and go to that boss. Is that what you do? No, I had a route like that before. My route right now is kind of balanced around having full health for certain bosses. Okay. Yeah, because you have quick weapon swapping, uh, it's possible to just kind of go around the room counterclockwise, but some people will just swap to the next weapon and go to that boss because the air sliding is so fast anyway. Normally I wouldn't stand so close to Skullman, but I took a lot of damage, so I gotta get his health. on uh, Bright Man of how to manipulate the pattern because he never took damage. There was no opportunity for the screen to freeze. And conservation of Pharaoh is important because we're going to be using that in a little bit here. That should be enough. Hopefully. Too few pharaohs. <laughs> That's alright. Alright, and here we go, final Wily. There are a couple opportunities to make platforming mistakes here, but nothing uh, too serious. There's some really aggressive stuff you can do that I'm just not going to opt for. Yeah, uh, it's, that's such a dangerous section. I get nervous every time on the spikes there. Uh, so Final Wily is weak to dust, of all things, uh, as if it's not strong enough. But he also can get double hit by it in each phase. So Garrison's going to try his best to uh, force a double hit. 
I was so close. No. And timing is after uh, the music, the little Time. chime stops there. Yeah. Yeah. That was alright. I had to use a couple of E tanks just for safety, but only one death and it was minor. Yeah, nice speed run. Thanks, man. That was very good. It was casual 26. Yeah, I can live with that considering uh, I got like a 29 last time I played this in a live setting. Yeah, that was really well done. Well, thanks for letting me play. I enjoyed it. Because owns. We yeah. taught you one thing. And thanks for letting me commentate. Yeah, I no the problem, chat man. enjoyed my insightful commentary. That's all I could want. Owns. That's as insightful as we need. But in any case, uh, big props to Sukikuro for the ROM hacks that he makes. They're all usually pretty innovative. Absolutely. I'm really looking forward to whatever he does next. Ripped Killa said, <laughs> "Ripped Killa going oh, in, dude. Arcade, dude. I, I thought can you, can we were go? bros. Yeah, I thought we were. We were like technical bros. I feel like the rooftop is gonna have a little less fireball. Oh my god! After that, that's brutal. Yeah, <laughs> he's gonna give me an egg." So up next we have a three-way Legend of Dark Witch race.